That's Lyndon Sluage with the anthems here in Ottawa. We're just about set to go. The Sharks and the Senators for the second and final time this season. Your starting goaltenders, Alex Stalock. The Salome B, his fourth ever NHL start at the age of 26 years old. And down at the other end, the veteran for the Ottawa Senators, Craig Anderson. The Sharks didn't see him earlier this month when San Jose beat Robin Leonard and the Sens 3-2. Anderson had a superb season last year. I'm talking near historic yeah. regular season numbers. The Sharks coaching staff, Todd McClellan and company, has the Sharks coming along on this road trip pretty nicely. They did Drop a game in Boston, but not for a lack of effort. Paul McClain and the Senators trying to get some rhythm going. They've been on a win-one-lose-one kind of roll for the last four games. Sharks shut out Montreal 2-0. It was just 17 hours ago that they stepped off the ice in Montreal. It was a short 30-minute flight here to Ottawa. Some rest, some recovery, no morning skate. And back on the ice here for this matinee against the rested Senators who last played on Friday night here at home when they lost 2-1 to the Anaheim Ducks. They ended up getting swept by Anaheim and like many an Eastern club this year, Drew, the Senators having a little trouble with Western opponents. Yeah, it's amazing when you look at the stats, the difference between the Western teams and the Eastern teams when they go head-to-head, -head, how successful the Western teams are. Underway here. As Logan Couture's line starts the game for Todd McClellan, flanked by Patrick Marlowe on his left and Tyler Kennedy on his right, and the Sharks' top D pair on this trip. And so far this season, Vlasic and Vaughn out on the ice as the Senators move it into San Jose territory. Zach Smith, a centering pass broken up by Couture as Chris Neal was looking for it. Kennedy takes it at the center line, fires it in, and Mika Zibanejad put him into the boards right in front of the Ottawa bench one change of note in the Sharks lineup and we'll give you the detailed lines but Mike Brown back in to the lineup tonight and he did not play last night in Montreal Freddie Hamilton not in the lineup for the Sharks here today James Shepard Gets to play alongside Joe Thornton and Tomas Hurdle. As you look at the Sharks' lines and defense pair, and obviously Todd McClellan really happy with Shepard's game last night against Ottawa. Very happy with James Shepard's game, so he's going to get a chance to play with Joe Thornton, see if he can continue to keep that momentum. From Freddie Hamilton's point of view, it's not anything that the Sharks disliked about his game, but they did want to get Mike Brown into the lineup. The guy who's rested and the guy who can bring some energy and some toughness. Shepard played 12 and a half minutes last night. Four shots, a couple of hits, and a blocked shot. A scramble at the side of the Ottawa net. Anderson seals off the near post, and it comes back to Jason Demers. His pass to the front, and they score! Tomas Hurdle makes it 1 0 early. Bounce on rebounds. Tomas Hurdle, who was sat in the third period. Last game, or his ice time was limited, gets his eighth goal of the season. He's been in a little bit of a drought since the goal-scoring bonanza he had earlier in his first three games. But he just able to get to the front of the net, get the puck. Good shift right off the bat. Shepard made things happen, worked off the boards to the front of the net. The thing about Tomas Hurdle is every time he gets the puck in the offensive zone, there is a chance that he will score because he's got that good of hands. So Hurdle gets on the board early on here. The last time he scored was, ironically, in the early going against Ottawa when the Senators were in San Jose back October 12th. Let's have a look at the, the, the high view. Just go ahead and roll, guys. It just worked by James Shepard, but then it's coming off the boards. Hurdle's going to get into the boards, then he's going to come off and get to the front of the net. That's the key. Get off the boards. Nobody picks him up coming out of the corner. The defenseman looking up at the puck. Hurdle realizes that he's got that lane and jumps to it. Eighth goal of the year for the 19-year-old from the Czech Republic, Tomas Hurdle, giving the Sharks the lead. And when San Jose scores first this year, they are 6-0-1 on the year. They've been great at getting on top early and then holding that lead throughout 60 minutes. We'll see if that's the case here today. Outside. As Corey Conacher goes offside for the Ottawa Senators. Jason Demers right now getting credit for the only assist on the goal by Hurdle. And there's your lines for Ottawa. The Ottawa Senators 
are a team that does have quickness, does have skill. Not as fast as Montreal. Montreal's a really fast team. Where you have to watch out for the Ottawa Senators is their power play. When we get to see it, if we get to see it, we'll throw a few wrinkles and some problems at the San Jose Sharks. Something the coaches have already prepared their team for. So Todd McClellan gets a goal on the second offensive shift of the game. Now Ottawa with a chance down deep. The puck brought to this side of the ice. As the Senators look to get that back. Eric Carlson to the net. He had a man in front. Neal screening Staylock. Now Neal works it back to the line. Mathot tees it up. And that deflects wide. To Benajab back to the point. Mathot paired on the fence with the super D-man Carlson. Former Norris Trophy winner from a couple of seasons ago. Here's Smith into the crease. To Benajab a backhand shot. And that's wide. Great battle going on at the front of the net as Chris Neal doing all he can to obscure the vision of Staylock and Braun intercepting the pass. Held in at the line by Ottawa. Now Smith for Carlson to the goal line and around. Tracked by Vlasic. He works it back to Mark Mathot. Mathot again. Now Carlson whips it to the goal. Staylock a stick save. Wingles working the corner against Neal and Smith. Poked around. Braun will move to it. And he'll fire it down the ice. Sharks are going to get a change. No, they won't. They'll get an icing call against them here after some good pressure by Ottawa. Sometimes you just got to punt. Let's have a look at our Lexus keys to the game for Todd McClellan's team. As usual, everything behind the defense. Can't put anything in front because transition games are so good nowadays. Make sure you make the D turn. You got to stay above the fray, above the play against the Ottawa Senators. Make sure you don't get caught trying to jump in and penalty kill sword outs, especially in the neutral zone and in the defensive zone because the penalty kill has some really neat little wrinkles and some neat looks, or power play, I should say, from the Ottawa Senators. Special wins that draw. The blast by Phillips from the point blocked by Tommy Wingle. Wingles will gain the zone and put it on net as the Sharks change up and get that much-needed new group on the ice. Milan Mahalik, the former Shark, wearing number nine for Ottawa on the ice. Spezza takes a hit from Hurdle on the near boards at center. Puck loose, comes to Shepard. He can't control it. Turning around is Colin Greening. Now it is Mahalik back to the point. A shot there by Wivkoch, and it's saved by Stalock as he got it with the glove. And hey, look where Alex Stalock was on that save. Right at the edge of the blue. Alex is not as big as Antti Niemi, so he needs to be bigger. So you're, you're going to have Alex try to be aggressive and challenge and take away the angle. As we look at Milan Mahalik, there's Antti Niemi, who was outstanding yesterday. His 25th shutout since 2009-2010, which puts him second in the league. Rich right behind Henrik Lundqvist by one. Bad, eh? He has 18 shutouts with the Sharks, nine of them on the road. Two this week. He's going to be a contender for NHL three-star selection, no doubt. Even though he isn't playing here against the Senators today. John McCarthy now with one man back. It's Corvo for Ottawa. As McCarthy's backhander is caught by Anderson. There's been a scoring change on the goal. And I thought they might add an assist for James Shepard. And he'll get the primary assist. Demers passed it into the slot and Shepard tipped it through to Hurdle before he scored. So it's Hurdle from Shepard and Demers at 116. Jason Demers, the good game yesterday in his hometown of Montreal. Big throw for him. The guys were happy for him. Puck is up. That one goes up into the netting behind Anderson. The interesting thing is what you talked about. Okay, you had the big game in Montreal. This is everybody. Now 17 hours later, what do you got? And as you said, the coaching staff gave them a rest, the guys the rest this morning, and had a meeting at about 11 o'clock and prepared them for tonight's game. It's, it's the one thing that professional athletes have to be able to do is reset and refocus right away. And hopefully you feel refreshed in this game. So far, a good start, and the Sharks have shown some jump. Here's Kyle Turris now for Ottawa, the former Phoenix Coyote forward who forced a trade Ended up getting his wish and moving here to Canada's national capital, Ottawa. Marlowe in the face-off circle, can't control it. And Conacher gets it back for the Senators. He stood up by Brad Stewart. 
A defenseman who had a strong night for the Sharks last night in Montreal. Carlson a shot. Stalock the save, and he covers as Eric Carlson challenges Stalock with his best save so far. Well, once again, you have to watch your pitches. You have to watch your aggressive play in the offensive zone, especially when that guy's out in the ice, because Carlson can jump up in the play. He's got a heck of a shot. He's great offensively. 70 points in 2011. That's when he was the Norris Trophy winner. Of course, had the awful injury with the Achilles tendon. But he looks like he's getting right back into game shape. And he's still, I think, a little slow in starting the season. But it looks like he's getting more and more comfortable. Two goals, eight points for Carlson. He does lead the team defensively in scoring. Now Joel Thornton. His line got the Sharks on the board here in the second minute of this first period. On the goal by Hurdle. Broken stick down in the corner as Weirkosh overskates it. Thornton back to the blue line. Braun loads up, fires it into traffic, and it comes back to Thornton. And on to Justin Braun again. Back for Thornton. Lots of Ottawa traffic in the area. And Colin Greening takes it over the line, but the Senators are offside. A nice job by Mark Edward Vlasic just to disrupt that attack. It was a three-on-two with Joe Thornton as a back checker. And Mark Edward Vlasic just disrupted and slowed down the timing to cause the offside. You got to mention, you know, we're talking about the Olympics coming up and everything else. You look at Mark Edward Vlasic, he has got to be a guy. Team Canada is all of a sudden going, wow. We didn't know he was this good. Played almost 22 minutes in Montreal last night. He was a plus one with three shots and a couple of blocks. Now a plus 10 on the year. He and Justin Braun, the co-leaders in the NHL, in that category that if you take it maybe in a game or two, it's not as telling. But if you take it over a stretch of 11 games, you start to see a trend for a player. And if you take it from two defensemen who always go against the other team's top lines, it's a very good trend for the San Jose Sharks. Cowan for Ottawa. Benajad couldn't get it up and out, and it's rimmed off the high glass by the Sharks. Centering pass for Wingles takes a wicked bounce to Anderson, who covered it. And now back for Jared Cowan. Caught by Scott Hannon. He'll bump it up for Pavelski. Almost through to Wingles. Good transition by Ottawa. Smith whips a shot that's saved by Stalock. Back toward the net, and he has to cover that one, too. Since the goal, Ottawa's come on pretty strong here in this opening period with some good scoring opportunities. Right now, they're out shooting the Sharks 7-4 oh. as Stalock had to handle that wicked one off the back wall. This is the line that's uh, been very good so far. They started the game for the Ottawa Senators with Smith, Neal, and Zabinijad, and they have been the one that's put the Sharks into some problems in their own zone. Zabinijad back at center. Zabinijad of Turkish descent, but he was born in Stockholm, Sweden. Get that every day. Stewart scampers through center ice. Brad Stewart puts it on net. Fat rebound. And they score. Andrew Desjardins whips the backhander off the post and in. And it's 2-0. Got a little something on that backhand, didn't he? But how often do we say it? How often do the players say it? The coaches say it. Get to the net. Look for second opportunity. Shoot the puck, get to the net, big rebound. Woo! That had some velocity on it. Turning, not even really looking at the net. And Andrew Desjardins gets a big goal. When you can get a goal from Desjardins, McCarthy, Brown line, that's a good sign. And again, you've got some balanced scoring. You've got some balanced attack. A little bit of a quick strike for the Sharks, even though the center has had most of the pressure. First goal of the season for Andrew Desjardins as he's seen many a teammate get on the scoreboard as the Sharks have had one of the most balanced scoring attacks in the league this year. Desjardins has not put one in, but he does there with some zip on it, as you said. A strong backhander. Brad Stewart with a great rush to start the play, and the Sharks here, but seven minutes in, are up 2-0. Chris Phillips' is shot. Stalock gives up the rebound, but the return shot wouldn't go for Ottawa. And Desjardins back now gets it for the Sharks. Ottawa, they bring a lot of pressure from the point, so you start to try to come up the wall, up the boards. Their defense are going to start pinching on you. Brad Stewart gets the only assist on the goal by Andrew Desjardins. 
his eighth career NHL goal. Nice for him to score here in Ontario. The native of Lively, Ontario. And that was a lively backhand. It certainly was. <laughs> That's why we get paid the medium bucks, through right there. That kind of stuff, right? Yeah. The time in the hotel on the off time is not wasted. <laughs> Kyle Turris back for the Senators. And they're offside again. That time, Conacher getting crossed up with Turris. Hurdle and to Chardon. And the Sharks are off to a great start here in Ottawa. What does he do? He drives towards the net, and that is what you want. Go ahead and roll it, gang. Brad Stewart, nice move with the blue line. Fire the puck on the net. Now here goes Andrew Desjardins. Stays with it, stays with it, turns, fires a backhand. As you said, had a ton of zip on it. Just like any Ford car you choose, it would have some zip as well on our Ford right choice. A nice and call here. And it'll come all the way back into the shark zone. Well, nice to see Andrew Desjardins join the list of what is now 14 Sharks players. And, and think about this. They're playing their 12th game. 14 players on the roster have already scored goals. And all but four on the roster, including Staylock, don't have points because Antini Niemi already has two right. assists. He already has two assists. And unfair to put Staylock in that group. He's only played, what, seven and a half minutes in the season? As it's turned aside by Anderson, right back to the net, and he catches the bouncer from Joe Thornton. Well, how many years do we talk about it? How many years do we see it in the National Hockey League? The teams that go the farthest in the playoffs, that win the Stanley Cup, have balance. They have depth. They have an attack that keeps coming at you. There's no drop-off from the first line to the fourth line. That's what the Sharks have been striving for, and you look at Desjardins, you look at Nieto, you look at Hamilton, you look at these guys coming in. Those are the guys that have... Whoa! Off the outside of the net by Pavelski. That didn't miss by a whole lot. And he just whipped it to the goal. You hear the Ottawa bench and players on the ice communicating with one another to tag up. Here's Demers on the rush. Pavelski tried to get it back through for Jason. And picked up by Mathod. He'll work it to Joe Corvo. Chris Neal. Slaps it around. Demers will just try and chip it out with the blade of his stick. Kept in, and now Carlson rushing it down. Scott Hannon's side of the ice. Up through the slot, all the way back to the line. Mathot from the goal line. It won't get all the way through without being blocked a time or two. Here's Neal, and again, this has been the toughest line for the Sharks to handle so far in this game. Smith back to the line. Mathot wheels it to Carlson. Far side for Smith, and it exploded off his blade. This is the line that has done anything for the, or something, I should say, for the Ottawa Senators. It's been that line. It's been Zabinijad, Neal, Smith. They've caused the Sharks some problems. McCarthy can't get it out. Stalock will send it over to the other side. Mike Brown there playing in his second game for the Sharks. Made his debut after the trade from Edmonton against Boston back on Thursday night. Didn't play a whole lot, about seven minutes. This crowd here at the Canadian Tire Center trying to get the Senators going. They're coming off a home loss to Anaheim. And by all accounts, the score flattered the Senators a bit, 2-1. Stalock save, gives up the rebound, but the Sharks are able to clear it and get it back out to center. But as we said, that was after they went into Detroit. And the Sharks know how tough it was in Detroit. They didn't even score in regulation, finally getting the only goal in the shootout. Ottawa went in there and lit up the wing 6-1. Tough to get a read on this team at this point in the year. Ottawa, that is. They had a great run last year, knocking out Montreal in the first round of the playoffs. Here's Carlson with a steal in the neutral zone. Takes it to the inside, draws it back, pops the shot, and Stalock reaching out with the right pad. Comes right back toward the net. Carlson again. This one a double tip. Now on the far side, the Senators keep it alive. Bobby Ryan. Ryan's pass broken up by Braun. Kennedy diving, can't clear. Braun takes it behind the net. He's got company. Kirsch. Trying to get it off Vlasic now. And kept in again by Carlson. Boy, he knocks a lot of pucks down. He keeps a lot of pucks in. Turris. Carlson. Score! 
may have been deflected by Conacher. Ottawa gets one back. It's 2-1. Ottawa doing a very good job in the offensive zone. This may have been partially blocked as well by that kind of threw everybody off. Looked at two guys. Conacher doing a great job in front. Shot. It looked like there was some movement there, didn't it? Yeah, it was a tip. It's yeah. just a question of off whom. Carlson can shoot. Logan Couture and maybe yeah. then Conacher and yeah. a glove. It could have been a double tip. Yeah. But Carlson, the one who made it happen with yeah. the booming shot from the right point, right now they're giving it to him for his third of the year. And keeping pucks in alive, keeping pucks in. Nice job by Corey Conacher yeah. to block Stalock's vision. So a big goal for the Senators here after yeah. a nice start for the Sharks. And it's 2-1. Todd McClellan comes back with the Thornton line. Joe up to the right point. Demers back for Thornton. He'll wait. Fire. And it deflects wide off a tip in front as Thornton got all of that. With the Emmer, there's some good work in front as well. Hurdle wrapped up by Phillips. And now Spezza will turn and come ahead. Cowan pokes it into the San Jose zone. Hannon across to Shepard. Greening able to keep it in at the point. Mahalik lifts it out of play into the screen. It is Carlson's goal, and the Senators have cut the lead in half. It's 2-1, Sharks. Let's hear it for tonight's special next year's Honor and Craig. Eric Carlson gets a big goal for the Senators. There's a profile of the 23-year-old Swede, the youngest defenseman to score over 70 points in a year since Brian Leach did it. In the late 80s. Talking to Jim Johnson today, assistant coach of the Sharks. He was just raving about the footwork, the agility of Eric Carlson. Called it all world. Of course, we had Matt Nieto in our pregame yeah. show with the interview, and we were absolutely certain that he was in the lineup tonight. He was going to be. Something must have happened in the warm-up before the game. As we do that interview at the beginning of the warm-up, half an hour before the broadcast starts, and Freddie Hamilton, who we thought was not going to be in the lineup tonight, is. So Nieto is not playing. Hamilton is. Hannon shot caught by Anderson. Nice job by Tomas Hurdle. Working against Chris Phillips, trying to get to the front of the net. A little bit of a battle. Chris Phillips, the veteran, KG vet of the Ottawa Centers, been here his entire career. There's no possibility that based on how Nieto warmed up the coaches would make a decision. No, no, no. It was definitely Freddie Hamilton was definitely not going to be in. Certainly the way that Matt Nieto played, they really liked him. So something must have happened in the warm-up after I talked to him. Of course, we didn't get a chance to see it. We've got everything going on in the booth here. We weren't watching. Sometimes you don't even know. It could be a poll of some sort. But Freddie's back in the game. Again, there's nothing that Freddie Hamilton did that had him initially scratched for this game. They like the way that Freddie has played. They like his speed. They think he understands the system and is responsible. So an opportunity for Freddie Hamilton to stay in and get his feet going. Maybe get one in the net for him. Yeah, Nieto had seven shots on goal last night. He also drew the D'Arnais penalty that led to what was the game-winning goal by Couture on the power play. So we will no doubt get an update from the Sharks on that later as the shot by Zibanejad went wide. Corvo, and that deflects off a block in front by Irwin. And now Joe Pavelski. 2-1, Sharks in front on goals by Hurdle and Desjardins. And icing called here against San Jose. I want you to watch Zabanajad. He does a nice job. What he's going to do here? Where is he? Keep rolling. Go ahead, rolling, guys. Freeze for a second. Okay, this is the area he gets to. That quiet area. You know, he's going to work there. Go ahead, roll. That quiet area. They continue to find those quiet, soft areas in the zone. Savannah's had a first rounder for Ottawa back in 2011. Started the year in Binghamton in the American Hockey League, but got called up a couple of games ago, and he has two points in the two games since coming up from the A, and Paul McLean's been very happy with him. We didn't see him in San Jose as he started the season in the minors. So we'll see if the Senators can build on the momentum of that goal by Carlson. And that. here he is again Look with it. That. Great stick handling move. Then the slap shot wide, and it rims out past center ice. Wow. 
There are very few guys in the world can do what that young man just did right there. That's impressive. Carlson again. The lead pass up ice. Taken by Pajot. Then a blast from the right by Ryan. And we know how Bobby Ryan can shoot it. I'll bet you one of the best days for the Sharks coaching staff this year was when Bobby Ryan got traded out of the Pacific Division. Absolutely. Look at the footwork here. Look at the stick handling footwork. Look at that. He went from one side of the ice to the other, making about four moves, getting it past sticks. Talk about agility, confidence with the puck, and skill. That was something. That was unbelievable to watch. It's Dan Boyle-like in many ways. Very Boyle-esque. Boyle-esque. I like that better. Well, this should be a concern for the Sharks because they spent the majority of this period in their own zone. I'm sure the coaches got not liking the fact that the Ottawa Center is really doing a terrific job winning those battles for the puck, winning those races to the loose pucks in their own zone. And of course, Todd McClellan doesn't have the last change here, so the matchups, at least the call on them, belong to Paul McClain as the home head coach. Couture. And Kennedy couldn't handle it as Ottawa comes back with it again. Ryan trying to thread the needle through to Conacher. And now Tomas Hurdle. He has one of the two San Jose goals. Checked off the puck by Carlson. Shepard comes in. Another big body down there, but he skates by Mathot. Now he gets a stick in. Turris supporting. He'll lift it to center for Ryan. Off on the wing, it's Carlson. And making no mistake is Alex Stalock. He's going to catch that and hold it for a faceoff in the shark zone when we come back to Ottawa. up on the winning end of a 5-3 score over the Coyotes he would go back to the American League the next day and that is what he suffered that devastating injury where a nerve on the back of his leg was severed he was stepped on by an opponent's skate and he missed a year Eric Carlson and Alex Daylock are kindred spirits yeah regard. they have something unfortunately in common in that regard but good on both of them yeah. they were able to battle back all the way to where they're back in the NHL and obviously for Carlson at a very high level for Alex Stalock that was career threatening and to not only come back and play hockey again but get back to the NHL and win a job nice job as Shepard puts one on target and Carlson's there for the rebound for Ottawa Joe Thornton trying to get it on back to Tomas Hurdle he does Demers will flip it up high down for Shepard. Wrapped up by Carlson. Now it's Thornton. Poked from him by Mathot. Carlson gains the line. Just lobs one in. Playing the rebound there. Carlson again. Look at the patience. Takes the shot. Blocked by Pavelski. Phillips around for Jason Spezza. Out front. Back it comes. Both Phillips. And the first man, Greening, had trouble handling it. Puck bouncing on the ice here at the Canadian Tire Center. Hurdle. He's got wheels. Skates in. And Anderson out to challenge him. And a good back check by Milan Mahalik really? as well. Yeah, he's probably the only guy on the Ottawa Centers who was on the ice that could have caught him. It was a very good back check, especially by Milan, not to take a penalty. But Tomas just couldn't pull away from the stick of Milan Mahalik. Back into the Ottawa zone now. No icing here as Corvo on it. Stewart can't get to it in time. Back up the ice is Pajot for, my, for Ottawa. Pajot gets it away. Off the back of the net. Stewart. And Grant tried to advance him, but it's back into Senators territory. Under three and a half left here in the first. Ottawa out shooting the Sharks 13-10. The Sharks have not had a game all year of the 11 they played where they've been outshot. And that was certainly not the case last night in Ottawa, or in Montreal, when they outshot the Canadiens 35-22. Well, you can see every Sharks game at home this season with season tickets, and they are still available. You get an average of 43% off individual tickets if you become a season ticket holder, plus all kinds of exclusive benefits. To purchase season tickets or for more information, go to 408-999-5757 or sjsharks.com slash tickets.
Joe Corvo, his second tour of duty with Ottawa. Picked him up as a free agent in the offseason. Jared Callen, a nice maneuver around Vlasic. Now Callen centers it. And Turris pulled the trigger, but it was blocked. Hamilton trying to slow down the attack out of the corner. Ryan back for Weircott. He'll hand it off. Cowan shot. Stay locked penalty the save. Up. Penalty coming up. I do believe it's going to be to Mike Brown. Conacher jousting with Brown a little bit. And we'll get the call here from the referee. So was 18, two missed interference. Along the boards. Good work in the offensive zone again. Mike Brown going to come out and make the play. And Kyle Turris continues with Kurt, Turris, stands him up, stops him from getting to the net. So away from the play, there is interference. Mike Brown watch, and now the power play comes out. Quick little chalk talk by head coach Paul McLean. Brown, who obviously has a head start on all of us for Movember. Wow. Uh, gets the interference call of 17-17. Ottawa's a power play. Ranked 17th right now. Sharks penalty kill. Now up to number three in the league. It was great. George Peros and Mike Brown, your teammates at Anaheim, had a talk last night after the game. And tell me the two best mustaches in the National Hockey League. I'm not sure they were Lenny McDonald-esque, but close. The combination of the two would have been. Brad Stewart. Trying to get some traction down in the corner, but he's got Senators all around him. Now Pavelski with room and time, and he'll clear it down. Carlson, of course, running the show on this power play for Ottawa up at the right point. The big dogs up front, Mahalik, Spezza, Bobby Ryan. Here's a possible breakaway for Couture, and Anderson, the save rebound, they score! Tommy Wingles puts it home, a short-handed goal, and it's 3-1 Sharks. One of our Lex's keys to the game was neutral, or penalty kill sort out, especially in the neutral zone. The Sharks do that, they put pressure immediately on the Ottawa center as Eric Carlson as he gets into the zone. Tommy Wingle stays with it, nice pickup by Logan Couture, tries to go five hole, and what does Tommy Wingles do? Follows up the play. Huge goal for the Sharks, well that almost goes in off the five hole deep by Logan Couture, but Tommy Wingle follows up the play. Big shorthanded goal with a minute 45 left. But you still, there's a minute 45 left. You can't relax because you scored the shorty. And make sure you kill the rest of this penalty off. Got a big goal. So Logan Couture returns to the city where he was a star for the Ottawa 67s in the Ontario Hockey League. And makes it 3-1, setting up Tommy Wingles. Wingles third of the year, a short-headed goal. That was set. That was a set play right there. Now the Senators go back to work on what's left of this power play. Corbo was shot. Stalock got his arm up and knocked that down with his glove. Chris Neal back out to the point for Corbo. Weircock on the wing. Quick shot. Saved by Stalock. Rebound. And he covers. Not yet. It comes out. Smith wanted Corbo. Good read there by McCarthy. Oh, Neal interfered with Alex Stalock. Didn't get the call, though. Now under a minute to go in the period. Still on the power play, Ottawa. There's the pass. Back out in front by Neal. Weircott settles it. A one-timer off the wing by Zvenejad, and that was blocked. And Stewart gets it out to Brown out of the penalty box. And Brown almost had a break himself. Weircott across the San Jose line. Stalock extending. Got to stick to that. The pace picks up here. Andrew Desjardins brings it in. And knocked away. Senators in transition. Pass up through the center of the ice for Pajot. Yep. And Blasek will clear it down. Engels goal set up by Couture. And an assist given to Mark Edward Blasek as well. At 18-15, shorthanded. Last few seconds here of the first period. Joe Thornton takes a shot. And there's the horn. And we've come to the end of 20 minutes here in Ottawa. At the end of one.
It's the Sharks three and the Ottawa Senators one. Stick around. We'll be back with Brody Brazil and Brett Hedekin in our Sportsnet Central studios in San Francisco. And then Drew, his head and beard. I hope they are sharpening their shears right now. It's all to try and raise money for the Blue Line and the Katie Moore Foundation, a couple of organizations that are near and dear to Brent Burns' heart. You can support these fights against cancer and the support of our troops by going to sharksfoundation.org and making a donation. The thing we don't talk about enough is how active Sharks players are in the community, especially Brent Burns. Brent Burns, an active role in helping out so many causes in the Bay Area. This is a really neat idea, and hopefully they'll be able to generate a lot of money for those two terrific foundations that Brent loves to support. Sharks as a group are very involved, not only in the South Bay, but all over the entire Bay Area. There's Joe Thornton, who had a great first period in the face-off circle when he was matched up against Jason Spezza. Thornton won six out of seven face-offs in that first period, 86% on draws. He's phenomenal. He is just, Joe Thornton, the way he is playing, you know, he's almost a shutdown center now for the for the San Jose Sharks. And the way he shuts down the opposition is he just gets in and controls the puck in the offensive zone like he did last night against the Montreal Canadiens. He has been ready to take on any role that the coaches have given him, working with the young guys. Of course, you know, Brent Burns out of the lineup. He's had a couple of different line mates, but that's some phases him. He just keeps rolling. Of course, Burns out and Boyle out. No word on when they'll be back, but we hope it's certainly sooner than later. And then, of course, a little more on the long-term radar are Rafi Torres and Adam Burrish who both underwent surgery, but Martin Havlat ought to be close, too. He's on the trip. He's been skating every day. Second period underway. Sharks up 3-1, to one, but Ottawa has to feel a little unfortunate to be down by two. Alex Daylock was strong in that first period, though. He made 16 saves. He was busy. But that's what you need. Yep. And, and he looks, as you said, looked very good. Couture takes the hit along the near corner boards to move that puck. Now back in on it again with Kennedy. It is a battle along the boards. Holy mackerel. Here's Carlson. In front and right past everyone through the far boards for Conacher. Now at the side, Staylock got across and denies Bobby Ryan. That's three times, oh, cross check in the face, wow. Three times, the Ottawa Senators have used the back of the net to try to make plays to the front. But they just the first two minutes, not even two minutes. Here's Turris as the Senators have been dominant here on this first shift of the second period. Conacher, a backhander off the stick of Kennedy. Here's a shot by Phillips, saved by Staylock. And finally, the Sharks will get it out. Kennedy oh, gotta get slides it down the boards, and that'll be icing. He, is, that's, that's, he has got to get the line here. He's got Tyler Kennedy. He's got the line. All he's got to do is, I know he's tired. I know he's been out there for a while, but he's still got enough room to get to the line, the red line, and get the puck deep. You see Todd McClellan looks a little perplexed. Go ahead and roll it, guys. I guess, well, he's getting a little bit of pressure, but if he gets his feet moving, I know the legs are burning, but you get your feet moving a little bit, you've got to make that blue line. That's what your job is. And McClellan may be forced to burn his time out here. Couture lost a glove, and that bought the Sharks a few extra seconds. And McClellan's not going to use it here. Now Kennedy needs to win the draw. He doesn't. The shot by Mahalik block. And now we get a whistle as it went out of play. And now McClellan will be able to get the line changed, but he won't be happy with the way that played out. Wow, not at all. And Logan Couture has to go down and block another shot. Takes another one off the legs. There you go. Again, the gamer that Dan Boyle called Logan Couture. We talked to Logan last night about it. Look at Larry Robinson. Those of you wondering what the red flowers are on the lapels of the Sharks coaching staff, those are poppies. Of course, a big day of remembrance here in Canada is November 11th, Remembrance Day. And that's in remembrance of the treaty that ended World War I. Here's a break for the Sharks. James Shepard. Saved by Anderson, and a penalty coming up to Ottawa on the play. The trip. Let's listen in. Waiting. 
We're 19 yard off tripping. <laughs> there it is. Spezza will go. So After the Sharks power play will come on. After Aaron Carlson complained, I mean, it, rush out of the zone and Joe Thornton's line has been able to come back out after you know the Sharks have been spending time in their own zone. Spencer's getting called on this. I think it's Carlson that, that was really the guy that tripped him, wasn't it? Was it wasn't Spencer? So the Sharks first power play of this game steered across by Pavelski out to Jason Demers. Last night Sharks got a power play goal turned out to be the game winner from Logan Couture. Sharks now have eight getting game winning goals on the season from eight different players. Of course, the other win was a shootout in which no game winner is awarded. It, it is Carlson. Watch. Here's Carlson right there. Okay, watch. Come across. He comes across. Spencer misses him. It's Carlson's stick. Carlson gets his stick down. Tristan. That's why Carlson came by the referee and said, I got him. He said, I got the puck before I got the leg. You heard him say that to the referee, right? Spencer got called for something he didn't even do. He just happened to be in the wrong place. Marlow winds and stick missed by stick snap. Yep, yep. Senators clear it as Marlowe gets a new tool. Grabs one off the bench from the alert equipment staff. One of the rare times where you see the referee pick up the broken stick and take it over to the bench. Which they should do all the time. That helps out the power play, that's for sure. Yeah, Cowan. A little finesse play to Turris. You hear the talk from the Ottawa Senators. Middle, middle, they're calling for Kyle Turris to put it to the middle. And that was Grant. Derek Grant making that play. Ottawa's penalty kill's been good. They're ranked sixth. Sharks power play eighth. Both top ten units here. Sharks on a Cash Creek power play for another 54 seconds. So far they haven't had it set up. Uh -oh. Staylock better get in the net as he scampers back and the puck came right out front but the Sharks advance it. Wingle to the Ottawa line. Kennedy, Wingle. Couldn't get the shot away. Kept in at the point, Irwin to Braun. Matt Irwin fires it, block comes right back to him. And a good stick there by Pajot, who blocked the initial shot by Irwin, now picks it off and clears. Down to 20 to go. Here's Wingles on the long pass. Fires! Anderson knocks it down. His pass by Alex Stalock. You must have heard you talk about Antiniemi having two assists. Irwin, Rister, and kicked out by Anderson again. Alertly cleared by Carlson. That's going to pretty much do it for the Shark power play. Two San Jose shots. As Braun goes across for Wingles, as Spezza comes out of the box, that's icing against the Sharks. Alex Daylock plays it up. Nice long pass. Good vision by Alex Daylock. The shot on net. Daylock drafted by the Sharks back in 2005 as you look at Niemi getting a rest tonight. Fourth round pick of the Sharks, Alex Daylock. Drafted 112th overall. One of those players who came up to the USHL, the United States Hockey League. A tier junior league. Kind of the U.S. answer to major junior in Canada. But a big difference being drew. The players who play in the USHL in the U.S. are still NCAA eligible. Whereas if you play in say the Western Hockey League or the OHL or the Q in Canada, you lose your eligibility. Too many men for the San Jose Sharks. Going to be a penalty. San Jose bench minor, too many men on the ice. My favorite penalty in the National Hockey League. You want to know why? Because I get to do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven if you're a goaltender. Oh, one, hey, you missed one, too. Oh, center on the right wing. I got him. Oh, okay. Are you actually telling me how to tell a straight? <laughs> Our relationship is strong. You are the partner, you are the master of the telestrator. Actually, I think I did miss that guy. <laughs> <laughs> Starts back on the penalty kill. Right after being on the penalty or on the power play. And Weircock starts it out for Ottawa. Patrick Weircotch up the middle. Chipped in as soon as he got it by Colin Greening. Now Carlson. Back across. Weircotch to the middle. And broken up. Patrick Marlowe gets it from his skates and down. Look out. Took a crazy bounce. 
We had a wonky one in Montreal last night that led to Couture's second goal. In and around by Carlson. Couture bats it across. Braun over to Wingle. Sharks come through center three on two shorthanded. Couture appeared to step on the puck a bit. Now Jason Spezza. Let's go a wrist shot that's blocked by Vlasic. Carlson. Bobby Ryan. Down low. Back pass by Spezza. Wanted Mahalik. Spezza fires. Staylock may have gotten a piece of that. And it's cleared down by Wingle. That particular spin play you saw down by the line with Bobby Ryan. Jim Johnson had shown that to his team in the scout meeting. Making sure the guys knew what to do in that situation. Ryan. And he'll lose it to McCarthy. John McCarthy shorthanded sends it in. Corvo has to activate and get back there to help out Anderson. How about the spin move goal by Matt Duchesne the other night for Colorado? That was a thing of beauty. That may end up in the top three, maybe even top five for goal of the year, along with Hurdle, no doubt. Power plays over one shot recorded by the Ottawa Senators. It stays a 3-1 game. Both teams changing on the fly. Sharks with the better change. Demers with Thornton going to the net. The pass, the tip, and it went off Joe's stick, but not toward the net. Good job by Hurdle coming back defensively to intercept that neutral zone pass from Ottawa. And Thornton again as he speeds by Corvo. Taps it to Irwin. His one-timer block. Back the other way come the Senators. Condra looking to get it ahead for Derek Grant. Now off the skate behind the net. Condra has a man in front. Wheels it out to Cowan at the point. He gets it past Thornton. Now Cowan. Checked in the corner by Demers. Irwin wraps it around for Hurdle, and he'll bang it safely to center and beyond. 21-15, the shot's in this game. Staloff is saved. Demers clears it past Cowan, despite his best efforts to knock it down. Devanajad. Now Smith gets past Demers, loose in front of the San Jose net. And a shaken up Senator down That's in the good. corner. It's Chris Neal, and he's he hurt. hurt. Yeah, he is hurt. If Chris Neal stays down, he's injured. Yeah. And he can't get to his feet right now. He's in some difficulty. I think he runs into the stick of Smith. Yeah, it was a teammate. Yeah. Blood coming from his face. We'll be back. And those sticks get up in the errant place. During the break, there were a couple of Senators players. Yeah. Trying to sell a penalty call on the play to the referee, but he wasn't biting. As you look at Zach Smith, who scored in that game in San Jose a couple of weeks ago when the Senators were on that six-game road trip to start the season. They fared pretty well points-wise. They finished that trip 2-2-2. Two, two, and two. So picked up six points. I guess you could call it a 500 road trip, but they lost four times. Wrap around, and do, uh, Vlasic almost put it home. There's a shot into Anderson, and he'll cover that up as Mark Edward Vlasic, good mobility coming around the Ottawa net. And this is kind of the shift, some of the shifts that the Sharks need. Yeah, Mark Edward Vlasic again showing confidence. And there's that shallower net, more space, a little bit easier to get the puck to the front of the net on wraparounds. Kind of an interesting audition for everybody on the ice tonight that's Canadian or American because there's two scouts here for the Olympic teams respectively. Peter Shirelli, the general manager of Boston, he's a scout for Team Canada. And Ray Shiro, the general manager of the Pittsburgh Penguins, he's a scout for Team USA. They are both in the press box tonight watching this game, so it's a real opportunity for players like Vlasic and Patrick Marlowe. Ray Shiro should be looking at Justin Brown. We'll talk about that in our intermission. We'll have a special sharpshooter segment coming up. And that'll be one of the topics we're going to address as Vlasic is put down in the corner by Greening. Greening trying to get it centered on a backhand, but the Sharks able to come out with it as Marlowe works his way up the boards. Checked by Carlson, and now it's back to Justin Braun. 3-1, Sharks leading all the scoring in the first period. 
Rolls by Hurdle to Jarden. And a nice short-handed goal by Wingle set up by Logan Couture's effort. Here's a chance for Ottawa. Steps of the shot. And he lost it off the end of his stick on a back check by Hurdle. Now he tussles Holding. behind the net with Stewart. Going to be a San Jose penalty. Out comes Anderson for an extra attacker. Carlson to Mathot. Back to Mathot. He scores. Top corner. Pass Stalock. 3-2. Sharks were scrambling on that one. All starts back in the neutral zone. I hit Jason Spencer with a late play. Nice little fake by Carlson. The thought drills it, and it is moving. Alex Daylock tries to get up. Boy, look at the traffic jam in front. And Mark Mathot gets his first goal of the year. I do believe it will be his. The Ottawa Senators capitalize on a very good offensive chance. And we haven't seen this happen very often this year. Sharks getting outshot 24-16. Stalock had made 21 saves until that one. Icing here against Ottawa. First goal of the year for the defenseman Mark Mathot, formerly of the Columbus Blue Jackets in the Western Conference. Therefore, now in the East, Mathot playing here in Ottawa. Carlson, who had a goal earlier, will also get an assist on this goal. And so will Spezza. Who was strong on the shift. So on the delay penalty, Ottawa gets back to within a goal. Last time this happened, the Sharks came right back with a goal of their own. Condra on the far side. Good pressure by Wingle. There's a shot and a save by Anderson. Good opportunity. Hurdle pulling the trigger. Four guys up in the rush. And Cowan couldn't get it to his stick. Sends love to hit that fourth guy coming into the zone. Hurdle sends it back deep. 3-2. We're halfway through the second period here in Ottawa. Turris, Conacher, taking control of by Irwin. Mike Brown runs into the pot at center. Demers, a short give. Freddie Hamilton couldn't get it in on second effort. He will. Hamilton working the far corner boards with Brown. Carlson in the way, intercepts to Turris. Desjardins who has a goal today. Turris digs it out and back for Eric Carlson. The fluid skating sweep. Carlson shot it just wide. Trying to pick the corner on Stalock. Irwin for Joe Pavelski. And up to Mike Brown. Brown. Short give. John McCarthy's got it. Corvo giving McCarthy the business along the board. Bobby Ryan gets it away from McCarthy and sends it into San Jose territory. Braun back and alertly clears it up right, right to the stick of Pavelski. Joe Pavelski buying some time. Takes a shot. And penalty coming up to Ottawa as Corvo controls and a San Jose power play. I think he's getting hooked. A one-goal game thanks to a blast by Mark Mathot here in Ottawa. Congratulations. It's on the power play after Joe Pavelski draws the hooking penalty from Joe Corvo. Leads us to our Geico quote of the game. Randy. That quote given us to us by Todd McClellan on last night's game in Montreal said, this was the first time we've had to put the brakes on after a loss. And our group's response was excellent, of course, referring to what happened in Boston when the Sharks lost in the last second of that game in New England. And then you wonder, how's your group going to respond from something like that? It's pretty devastating when you outplay a team like the Sharks outplayed the Bruins that night, and you lose it on some missed coverage in the last second of the game. There's Chris Neal back on the bench. Good to see that. A little repair work there above the lip. And the Sharks did respond very well. Very, very well. And, and here's another test. And coaches are always looking for a little insight in their team. 
afternoon. The makeup of the team, the character that we always talk about, is the test for the Sharks of the short turnaround after a very good game. Opportunity on the power play here. Shot comes in. Screened was Anderson, but the puck rejected and cleared back down. On one other note regarding the game last night, you look how they respond to start the game, but then after failing to close a game out in Boston, how would they close the game out last night? And they closed it out tremendously. Dominating fashion. Still a lot of work to do here in Ottawa, though. Their two-goal lead has dwindled to one. As Marlowe sends it in for Logan Couture on the board. Cowan. For help. And Couture by himself. Now Marlowe helps him out. And he rims it around to Pavelski. Pressure from Bobby Ryan. And Pavelski lays it on the stick of Thornton. Marlowe down at the goal line. Couture. Up top, Pavelski shot off the block by Mahalik. Logan just fanned on that pass, and that probably would have went back door to Jason Demers before it got out to Pavelski. Thornton curls off the boards. Couture, one-timer, stick save for Anderson. Had a good, strong push across the crease. Thornton tried to dump it out short side. Nope. Broke it up and cleared down. I think that Alex Stalock, like I did, thought there was a penalty coming up. Here's a shorthanded chance. Mahalik across with Pajot, and Stalock makes the save. <laughs> well, we know what a sniper Milan Mahalik can be, the former Shark winger. Just about tied it there. He did. Good work along the boards. He's able to get the puck. Sharks were calling for a penalty there. It looked like Milan Mahalik had almost grabbed Joe Pavelski. Comes in. Jason, I'm sorry, Logan Couture playing defense. The forward takes away the pass. Milan thinking nothing but shoot. 23rd save of the game. Alex Stalock in his first start of the season. Oh. First start as the Sharks backup net minder as he beat out Harry Sateri for the job in training camp. Here's Mathot with a shorthanded shot. Sharks need to get their power play going here, Drew. Yes, they do. This road trip has been very, very tough on the power play percentage. Sharks not been able to get it clicking like they had earlier in the first games before the Sharks hit the road. They were one for four last night. Couture ended up with the game winner. Only one power play chance in Boston. Any coincidence that Dan Boyle and Brent Burns have not been in the lineup on this road trip? Got to be part of it. And they went over three on the power play to start the trip in Detroit. Certainly not something that, you know, you'll talk about a lot. If you're a coaching staff, you will certainly downplay that. But personnel, personnel. Talented players make power plays better. It's pretty obvious. Where they have steadily gotten better on this road trip is on the penalty kill. Up to third best in the NHL now. Off the skate of Tyler Kennedy. Anderson will come out to handle it. And it's quickly slapped right down again by um, Carlson. And that is pretty much going to do it. Just one shot on goal for that power play for the Sharks. Officially 0 for 2 on the night. 3-2 Sharks. Back to 5 on 5. Hurdle a shot. Rebound. After the Anderson save. Irwin activated. Here's Mahalik. He's got Turris. The pass. And Turris can't catch it. He's sorting that out pretty well. Back to the net. And Stalock covers with a couple of the big guns. Ryan and Mahalik swarming. Tomas Hurdle has a dynamite chance. And then the Ottawa Senators respond. Hurdle comes in, picks the puck up right at the seam. Good chance on that. Just goes wide, misses his own rebound, and then boom. Here you go. Watch the sort out. Tommy Wingles says, I'll take the puck here. You take the man in the middle, which is Turris and Justin Braun. They do a good job, but Turris gets it as Braun kind of overskates and sends it right back to the net. Good sort out coming back, but still, you've got to be able to put the brakes on and recover. Thornton stands in the circle against Spezza. This has been a matchup that Joe Thornton's had the best of all night, and he did there again. Brad Stewart to James Shepard. Now here's Thornton crossing into the Ottawa zone. Takes the shot. Anderson's going to hang on. Like Anderson settled down a little bit from the first period. Allowing three in the first for a goaltender of his quality. Not something, obviously, that he's used to or the, or the Sens are used to. Last year, Anderson set a modern-day record in the NHL with his save percentage. He was 941 in the regular season. And the goals against well under 2.00. He was 
and then took them into the second round of the playoffs. Well, the Sharks know his ability, obviously, from yeah. the playoffs against the Colorado Avalanche, and he was a member of that team. The Sharks ended up coming from behind in that series to win it in six games, but Anderson was terrific. So we're back to five on five here with six to go in the second period in Ottawa. Technically the fourth game out of five on this road trip for the Sharks, but they'll actually go home tonight to the Bay Area, spend a couple of days practicing there, and then fly to L.A. for the game on Wednesday, which technically is the fifth game of the trip. But that little respite back at home is probably a very good thing. Very good idea. Freddie Hamilton. Pan and a backhander. That was blocked by Corvo. Taken away by Desjardins. He'll take a shot. Double tip. Couture. And the late man coming with a chance there. Marlowe kept in at the line. Braun. And that's tipped up into the corner glass. Kennedy roughed up by Corvo. They battle down low. Tyler Kennedy trying to squirm out of that spot. Couture and Anderson's going to eat this up for a faceoff. Just under five to go here in the second period. He Heatley for the first time since he was traded from the Senators to the Sharks. Of course, the media here went cuckoo over the return of the heater. Wasn't a very popular guy here when he left. No, he was not. Logan Couture led the way for the Sharks. First two goal game. First two goal game. Milan Mahala came over in the Danny Heatley trade. They're going to go through it all again on December 1st, but this time it'll be Alfie coming back. Daniel Alfredson, who spent his entire NHL career here, but I don't think he'll get the same reception as Heatley. No. Certainly a great deal of respect between this fan base and Daniel Alfredson over the years. And not quite that with the Heater. No. Hey. <laughs> Hashtag 1506, <laughs> <laughs> That is not Danny Heatley. Wrist shot handled by Stalock and off his stick and out of play. Well, the Sharks are coming home soon. And why not get ready by getting a big deal with the Big Apple ticket pack? You get tickets to four games, including the Islanders, Devils, and Sabres, plus a $25 gift card to the Shark Store. Packages start at just $164. Limited supply. Call now at 408-999-5757 or go to the web at sjsharks.com slash tickets. You won't get apples. No. But you will like the apples when you see the Sharks on the ice. As in, how you like them apples? That's a that's a package for the hardcore fan. Nice. That is a hardcore. <laughs> Here's Demers. <laughs> We're getting instructions just to stop talking. Right now. Probably a good idea. Yeah, it's trying to compare apples to oranges. It's just not a good idea. Cowan, up for Neil, who took that stick in the mouth earlier. Matt Irwin and the captain Joe Thornton will skip this one down the ice. Won't be any icing here as Mathot gets back on it. Good hockey game here in Ottawa. Eric Carlson, he dances into the zone. Plays the puck to Mahalik. Stewart losing an edge. Carlson down the low and plays it out to Conacher. And that pass got by him all the way to Anderson. Corey Conacher looking for his first goal of the year. And, and a hand pass hand called pass. there in the neutral zone. Fantastic. Craig Anderson is pretty good at playing the puck. He's uh, one of those goaltenders like Mike Smith. Big guy who can play the puck, gets out, skates well, moves it well. There's not been much going as the Sharks have closed the shot gap. It's now 28-21, but things have kind of lulled a little bit for both teams. Trying to find some offense. It's some heavy slugging though in the shark zone. You'll get a look at Team USA, I would think. Craig Anderson. Yeah. Certainly be but one of the players in the mix. Pink. But there's only one guy that they're going to start. And who would that be? Jonathan Quick. I think you're right. Uh, referee's got in the way. Here's Turris to the net. Staylock blocks it. 
And it was assisted by Scott Hannon, who was down prone on the ice, and that allowed Staylock to just put a catching glove over it and Shark, kill the play. Sorry, the Sharks want to get out of the zone. It goes off the linesman, stays in the zone. The Sharks don't have a great recovery, but as you said, Scott Hannon slides down to block that pass across. And Sharks have had trouble in their own zone today, and this is a very rare, very rare thing that we have seen. Ottawa playing a very good game along the boards. Zach Smith stands in the circle against Joe Pavelski. And the faceoff won by Ottawa. Colin shot back to Smith. That's blocked. Cleared by McCarthy, not out. Now it's out. Pavelski at center to Wingles. He's got McCarthy with him. Wingles to the trailer. Vlasic. And he shot it over the net. Fourth ice coming into play. Pavelski tipped by McCarthy. Covered by Anderson. Now third, I'm sorry, fourth man. And the late ice, the secondary ice coming into play as everybody drives towards the net. Sometimes you just got to stay with it. If you're Joe Pavelski in the neutral, just go ahead and roll, guys. Just watch the late play coming up here. Okay, Vlasic times it, times it. Now he's coming in, he's the late man coming in. The puck just looks like it flipped up on him before, it sh before he shot it, and that's why it went up high, but you had a good drive to the net. Pavelski does an outstanding job in the neutral zone, just staying with him. You know, you just one time, there's a time in the game, in a game like this, you just realize, okay, it's gonna be a battle. Every time we move up the ice, it's gonna be a battle, try to get it out past the boards and get something going. Derek Grant winning a draw there against Joe Thornton. And here he is now getting it from Pepper. Oh. Stewart with the hit. Good strong hit. Grant drops his stick. They like to pinch. Ottawa Sanders, we talked about that in the first period. They like to pinch. Back out at center. Carlson settles it. Turns away from Tomas Hurdle. Sharks got a 2-0 lead. Six and a half minutes into this game on goals by Hurdle into Jardin, but Ottawa has chipped away at it to cut it back to one here. Sharks playing the second game of back-to-backs. Oh, this will be their hit. first back-to-backs all year. They'll have ten total, fewest in the league. Spezza, and a stick there by Thornton to knock it away. The thought gets back as Shepard will take it into the zone. Puts it on target. Trying to get to his own rebound, but Spezza able to turn back. Minute and a half to go in the period. We'll have sharpshooters coming up in the second. You all loaded? I'm loaded, ready to go. Andrew Desjardins, who has his first goal of the year tonight. Now Turris. Koch for Conacher, Conacher across for Ryan. Ryan settles it, drops it for Turris. And it's blocked wide. In comes Phillips to Jardin, working against the veteran defenseman. Up the boards for Brown. He's able to get it clear. As you heard, we're inside the final minute. Good poke check there by Demers. It sends Hurdle, or make it uh, Brown, back the other way. He'll tap it into the corner. Quick change for the Sharks late here in the second period. And Ottawa wants one now, too. Staylock, up ice for Kennedy. Deep and back to Cowan. Get some speed going to Neal. Chris Neal for Zvenejad. He'll try again. Corvo for Cowan. The big man up for Zvenejad. Braun working him. Back to the line. Corvo loads up. Wrist shot. Oh. Tip. They had Staylock moving to his right, but he made the adjustment. Puck went wide of the net. Sabanejad in front, Stalock sealing off the near post. They dig away at it, and the buzzer sounds. And now Vlasic going at it with Neal after the buzzer. And they'll separate those two. We've played 40 minutes here in Ottawa. It's been a great hockey game. The Sharks came into the period with the lead. And they'll leave with the lead, but it's been cut to one. 3-2 Sharks. We'll check in with Brody and Hetty coming up in the studio. And then Drew and I will be back to debate the West versus the East power balance in the NHL. Well, the big thing for us is our puck management, Randy. We want to make sure that we're taking care of it. We're strong at the blue lines. And uh, 
Yep. You know what? That we want to manage our shift length by putting pucks in good spots. Jay, how do you spend less time in your zone? Well, Drew, I think uh, the first thing is we've got to talk, and uh, they're yeah. coming at us with a, a heavy pinch and a strong four check. So if we're talking, we have good board work, and um, we're in our, our proper positions on the breakout, I think we'll be fine. Thank you, Jay. Thanks, guys. A heavy pinch that Jay was talking about. We've seen that all game, without a doubt. And the talk is, how many times do we... Well, we've had two guys mic'd up, Logan Couture and Brent Burns, and you hear that all the time. Very important. Well, and you've got one of the best pinchers in the game out there right. in Eric Carlson. Eric, okay. just pinched you up in the box, in the press box. That's, pinch me. <laughs> Not to be confused with the great hip of the Bare Naked Ladies from here in Canada. Very nice. Very nice reference. Very Thank you. Good northern, you know, Canadian reference not getting that on other regional no cable way. networks tonight no, no way. way you get that logan couture kind of a native son here played his junior yeah. hockey with the ottawa 67s loves coming here he would love to close out this game with a strong third period as would the sharks as they are number one in the western conference pacific division 19 points coming in his billets are here when he was a young man playing for the Ottawa 67s. He that would be the family he lived with. Neal a shot and that hit the post. That got by Stela. Now Couture, odd man attack. On the wing, Kennedy back for Marlow and he couldn't catch it. That was a nice pass. I thought Kennedy was gonna shoot. Now Couture in traffic and he bats it out to center. That's too bad. That's a wonderful opportunity to even get on net. My youngest son lived away from home for a couple of years playing hockey, and yeah. I would mention to people, yeah, he's with a billet family, and they'd say, what is that? Oh, sorry. <laughs> Very common for us to know. Here are. in Canada, everybody knows what that means, but not so much, I guess, south of the border. It's a family that basically takes you in and lets yeah. you live with them. Because they love hockey and they want to help out their community. Yeah. Simple as that. Even happens at the NHL level when yeah. 18 and 19 year olds make the league. We, uh, we met Joe Thornton's billet when his first few years in, in Boston. He actually stayed with him for three years. Merrill Lemieux billeted Sidney Crosby. Right. I think that was for about 10 years. Yeah. Thornton. Shepard scores! James Shepard, his first goal of the year, and it's a big one here to start the third period. Speak of Joe Thornton, the work that he did in that shift. Yeoman-like job coming across, that's James Shepard. Look at the look before Joe gets there. Lifts the stick, quick release by James Shepard. What a good job by Joe Thornton. Just makes the play, manhandles the play along the boards. That was a shot and a finish by James Shepard. James Shepard scored one goal last year in the shortened season. And he gets his first of this campaign as the Sharks come out and get the first goal of the third period and put Ottawa back into a two-goal hole. Thornton will get the primary assist, but here's Kyle Turris now. Moves down that early side of the ice, and Alex Stalock comes out to the top of the crease and makes the stave. It continues. Closing in on Nicholas Lidstrom now. All-time scorers in NHL history. Jumbo Joe all alone in 51st. And then you just go up and up and up, and they're all Hall of Famers ahead of him. <laughs> that was that's that was a play though by Joe down down low. Just to win the battle for the puck. He looked before he even got to the puck where he was gonna go with it. 12th assist and 13th point of the year for Joe Thornton. James Shepard's first goal of the year. And it comes at 129. So for the second out of three periods, the Sharks get an early goal in the period to set the table. I do believe that moves Joe into a tie for most assists in the National Hockey League right now with Hendrick Sedin. We'll get our people on it. I have an assist guy. Sorry, you have an assist guy? Yeah. He, and he just told me it's one behind him, Uncle Darren Stevens. So all right. All things graphic and interesting on the program. And whatever Peter Shirelli, the scout for Team Canada's Olympic squad, didn't already know about Joe Thornton, 
And he knows quite a bit yeah. because of his job description. Yeah, well, he knows. He found out a little bit more just now. He knows Boston never should have traded him. That's what he knows. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> he knows. The key, I wish I still had that guy on my team. <laughs> So now we'll see what Ottawa has coming back as they'll push the pace. A four on two. Conacher, the trailer, and the shot wide. Stalock came out to cut off the angle, and that forced a pass, I think. Give Stalock some credit there for being aggressive. And it's cleared back down, and it was a touch at center, so there's no icing on the play, but that was an awesome attack coming out of their own end by the Senators. Four guys jumping up. That's tough to handle. 4-2. The Sharks in front. Right now, San Jose's goal differential, as of this moment in the NHL, is an astounding plus 27. 27 more goals scored than they've given up. As Irwin gets back ahead of Chris Neal. Now Zibanejad to Smith, to Neal coming out of the corner off his stick, and the Sharks will control. You hear, the, you hear the communication. Wheel! You heard the Sharks talking to Matt Irwin on that particular shift with Jay Woodcroft talked about. Wheel means get your feet moving, get it out of the zone on your own. Brown had Thornton in the vicinity, tried to get it to him, but it went to Neal. Now Neal into San Jose territory, placing it behind the net. Brad Stewart's there. Time to make a play, gets it around, and Thornton gets it out to center and beyond. And there's the aggressive pinch. Cowan comes down the boards right away. He wasn't even hesitating. Wasn't, wasn't even waiting for the puck to move to the boards. Now the Senators come through center. The captain, Jason Spezza, who inherited the C from Alfredson when he left for the Red Wings. Broken up. Now Pavelski down the left side, supporting him is McCarthy. McCarthy looking for the pass, it's behind him. Filling the gap is Wingles, he'll chop it around to this side. Cowan and McCarthy in a race. Pavelski out with it, cut off by Mahalik. Back to the point, Vlasic, he backskates into the high slot, tipped just wide. Anderson didn't see it change direction. No. No. And Pavelski has it knocked off his stick by Mahalik up to Spezza who dumps it in. Just over five gone here in the third, and the Sharks have regained their two-goal lead. Phillips steers it in, but right to Vlasic's stick. Braun. That's off Mahalik and out of play into the crowd just below us. Good chance for the Sharks, and as you said, Craig Anderson didn't see it. Thanks for the work by Mark Edward Vlasic. Go ahead and roll, guys. Coming across the ice, coming across the ice, coming across the ice. Great lateral movement, shoots the puck, bounces off the stick. Kind of a funky bounce. And a neat look at Mark Edward Vlasic's footwork across the blue line. Mark Edward Vlasic talking things over with the coaching staff over on the San Jose bench. Vlasic with another assist tonight. That gives him seven on the year and nine points to lead the Sharks defense. Patrick Marlowe. The shot and a hard one by Couture high. Rebounds all the way into center ice. Turris back for Bobby Ryan. Ryan to Turris. Corvo. Now Phillips. Kennedy up high. Phillips rims it around. Turris moves to it on this side. Wrapped up is Irwin by Greening. Down goes Irwin. Out with it is Ryan to Phillips, the shot block. You see how low Phillips was there? Right down below the hash marks. Greening. No angle for a shot for Turris, and it's played up and out to Marlowe. Patrick Marlowe at the end of his shift, see what he's got left. Can he get around Carlson? No. And a nice defensive play by a blue liner who's known for his offensive play, but he showed he can go the other way right there. You heard also the communication on the bench. You heard hard hard and that was the, the Sharks bench telling Tyler Kennedy you got to play it hard on the blue line to get it out here's Carlson on the attack now swings it to the net and that's out of play off Stalock stick James Shepard a two-point game gets his first goal of this year to make it 4-2 good job by Hurdle Joe Thornton jumps on it comes the support find that soft area which is exactly what 
James Shepard did after a sweet pass by Joe Thornton. Boom, in the net. First goal of the season. And his first two-point game in a long time, over four years, back to 2009 with the Minnesota Wild. That's a long time coming for James Shepard with multiple points, but he's got him here tonight in Ottawa as the Sharks youth coming through on a day when everybody's a little fatigued. Dropping the puck a mere 17 hours after the final whistle in Montreal the other night as Chris Neal just missed an opportunity. I think Chris Neal thought the puck was going to get to him. He got surprised. 12 and a half left now, and we've seen Ottawa push the puck most of this game. They're going to need to push a little harder here in the third as Stalock will catch the fly ball and hold. That was close. That was a good attacking team, good rushing team. Three guys up on the play. Alex Daylock has been very busy. 32 shots he has faced. He has been very good. Chris Neal's line with Zach Smith, Mika Zabinijad have been very, very good. That's why they started. That's why they are continuing to control the play in the Shark zone. Sharks are being outshot 32-24. They have been the leader in shots in every game so far this season through their first 11. Yeah, Grant for the strength. Corvo. Gets the shot away, but it was blocked by Braun. Spezza now turns from Pavelski onto the point. Cowan mishandled it. Chance for a possible two-on-one. Wingles, a good shovel pass. Pavelski to the trailer. Braun into Pavelski. Scores! Joe Pavelski with the goal. 5-2. Ray Shiro right now is asking Doug Wilson for Justin Braun's cell phone number. That is a play. How about this play by Tommy Wiggles? You said great shovel pass. Justin Braun walks in, fights off the check, and finds Joe Pavelski. Fights off a hard check on the way back by Corey Conacher. Finds Joe Pavelski. Goal in the net. That is a heck of a goal. So many good things happen there. Joe Pavelski finishes it off. An All-American goal, yeah. Joe Pavelski from Justin Braun and Tommy Wingles. Team USA may just say, we'll take all your Americans. So I guess they're going to review this, are they? Apparently they are. What would the review be? That it was kicked in. Ah, I didn't notice that. Let's have a look at it. Well, they're talking it over right yeah. now. Yeah, Here discussion. we go. Here's out of the zone. Terrific work. Tommy Wingles pops it forward. Joe Pavelski fights it off. This is a great job by Justin Braun. Oh, there's no, definitely no, from that angle, there's no kicking motion at all. No. Nope. Yeah, he got it with yeah, a stick. He turned, turned, got it with a stick. Yeah. That'll stand as a good goal. It'll be yeah. Pavelski from Braun and Wingles. USA. USA. That was a very impressive goal. They're definitely a count that. That will be a 5 2 goal. There was no distinct kicking motion at all put to us like he got it with his stick that should be a good one and it was one that you look at and go wow 759 time of the goal for joe pavelski yeah this definitely gets it with the stick you can see right there drops the stick in the process slams into the net but this one will count i'm being and here's the announcement. I know. we'll listen in as referee Jean Hebert will announce. After further review, the play on the ace stand, good goal. Fourth of the year for the big Pavelski. That's <laughs> Justin Braun's first assist. What? Wow. Well, you know that Joe Pavelski is going to be in Sochi for Team USA. He was such a terrific part of Team USA in Vancouver. I got to think that's an automatic. That's an automatic. But that goal yeah, was something. Pavelski from Braun and Wingles. And that might be enough, but yeah. Ottawa's got a lot of talent. A lot of time. 5-2. A three-goal lead. 11 and a half minutes left. The Senators bring now. Always interesting to see these situations. Coaches Always interested yep. to see how their teams react, too. What's your character? What's your makeup? Daylock makes the safe play, catches that, and he'll take the face off. Uh, I'm still thinking about that goal. Hey, so you had three really dynamite plays. The little shovel pass fighting off 
to work for the pass and the strength of, of Justin Braun. Well, first of all, Joe Pavelski to pick it up, stay on side. The strength of Justin Braun, the smarts to jump in the play. And then the wits of Justin Braun to pass it over Joe Pavelski. It, it's fabulous. You talk about the Sharks' depth. In this game, 11 different players have points. Five players have scored the goals. And again, the Sharks super five on five. No power play. In fact, they got a shorthanded goal in this game from Tommy Wingles. You heard again. Yeah, I love when the coaches tell us something when we're talking to them, and then you hear it happen on the ice. You see it happen on the ice. You heard that as the play was coming out of the zone. You heard time, time, time as Scott Hannon got the puck. Again, the communication that Jay Woodcroft was, was asking for from his team. Condra for Ottawa. Hurdle checks his shoulder, works it up to the point, and now Thornton will bring it out. That support from Shepard, who's had another strong game. Back-to-back -back for him after a healthy scratch, and he watched from the press box. Well, when you healthy scratch a guy, you hope he gets the message. And he only gets the message if you deliver it properly. The coaching staff did that. And for the short term, the first two games that James has been back, he's been fabulous. You don't know until you're told by the coach what you're supposed to be doing. Matt Irwin sends it in. Pavelski can't quite get to it. Cowan for Ottawa, and a good job by Wingles. He almost turned it the other way for an odd man rush with Pavelski again. Sharks were clinical in their ability to finish things out in Montreal last night. That's a nice little pass. Wingles. Phillips trying to jam it out of there. Wingles for McCarthy. And back to the Senators. As Wurkoch will just backhand it in for a change. Look at John McCarthy work back. Classic. And a delay penalty coming up to Ottawa. Here's Vlasic. He's tripped on his two. way to the net. Might be two penalties. Should be two penalties. Only one arm up. We'll see. Marlowe. That's wide. Comes back out past center. Staylock's out of the net. Justin Braun gives it to Logan Couture. Here come the Sharks with a six on five. Bonus time on this delay call, and it's tipped just wide by Marlowe. Back out front. Classic will chase it down to this side. Matt Irwin gets it back. Irwin lets one go. That's blocked by Conacher. Couture recovers. Irwin again. Joe Thornton. He'll wait into the middle. Pinballs around, and finally Spetzer clears it away from out front. And we get the whistle. We'll see if there's one or two penalties. Looks like just one. Uh -huh. The big Pavelski making it by the cross check. It was not a great call. That's why. That's why they didn't call the trip because the first call was really bad. So they they made up the first call on the non-second call before the whistle even blew. Is that what you're telling me? That's a pretty good adjustment on the fly by the officials. Sharks on a power play here, leading 5-2, a little over eight minutes to go in the third period. Sharks don't have a, sh a power play goal in this game. They had one last night in Montreal from Logan Couture, who scored both the goals in the game. Five different Sharks with goals in this one. Who do you shut down? Well, that's the question a lot of teams have been asking right now. Who do you shut down playing against the San Jose Sharks, especially with the strength they have down the middle? Three pretty decent centers in Joe Thornton, Logan Couture, and Joe Pavelski. Call Joe Pavelski a third-line center is uh, it's not just not right. Yeah. Oh. Smith oh, and Stalock holds the oh, fort. Strong, strong by Alex Stalock. He's had a big game. Really good game, hasn't he? 22 saves for his first start of the year so far. And now Carlson, who had a big first period, but he hasn't been quite so dominant since. Stalock will catch that, and a face-off to come. Well, the power play has not been very good for the San Jose Sharks, but that man right there, Alex Stalock, has. This is a tough play. Again, Zach Smith drives the net. The save, pad down, gets cruised or pushed out of the crease, but Stalock still strong in net.
very good game so far. Darted two games for the Sharks last year, but had a career year with Worcester. A 2.60 goals against average. He won 17 games in a strong American Hockey League season. And then beat out Harry Sateri in training camp. And he had to wait till today, game 12 of the year, to get his first chance. Made the best of it so far. Sharks go offside. 38 to go on this power play. One thing, you know, you look at, well, how many games is Alex going to play? Really, you know what? It's up to Anthony. Todd McCollum talks to his coach all the time. Or talks to his goalie all the time. So how do you feel? What do you want to do? You know, Corey Schwab, Wayne Thomas, they both have input. Todd asks for their valued opinion. And then he goes right to the right to the guy. Until today, Niemi had been the only goalie in the NHL to play every minute for his team up to this point in the year. So he gets his first rest of the year against the Broken Senators. Stick. Play the stick. Play the puck with the broken stick. That's going to be a penalty to Matt yeah. Irwin for doing that. Yeah. That's just instinct there. I, I just yeah. don't think... You're, you're afraid there's going to be a breakaway. You'd rather take that penalty. San Jose 52, two minutes playing with broken stick. Yeah. How much you can do there? No. Well, 20 seconds will be even up, and then the Ottawa Senators go on the power play. And this actually kind of critical moment still, partner. Yep, for sure. You know, you think about what's the alternative there? Okay, he drops the stick and tries to get a body on the attacker. Yeah. Then he might get an interference, interference call. call. Penalty shot, maybe. Yeah. I mean, it's just do what you can. So playing with a broken stick, the penalty call against Matt Irwin at 13-17. That ends the Sharks' power play. And we get the always popular four-on-four -four play here for 16 more seconds. And then an Ottawa power play. And a lost stick there by Scott Hannon. I think. No. no. Oh, they wave it off. Why? I think they felt Carlson slowed up. Must have. Marlowe chips it out, but Kowalski a little off the mark couldn't get to it. Now Ottawa on the power play. And they've got to be thinking we need a goal here. Yeah. To the net, steered away by Stalock, Turris, back to Eric Carlson. Loading up is Rearcott, saved by Stalock. He saw it through the screen. Neal was there watching him with Stewart, but Stalock had a, enough of a peek at it to make the stop off the defenseman. Carlson with the head up, goes across. Really good job in front. Brad Stewart battling with Chris Neal. Tries to keep him boxed out, doesn't let him get in front of Alex Stalock. Coaches look for that all the time, especially Larry Robinson and Jim Johnson, two guys who were very good at boxing guys out. Off the draw, Sens have it again. Here touch on this side now. Carlson, a quick shot, save, and the rebound swatted at by Mahalik, but cleared by the Sharks. A uh, heck of a save. That was deflected, and Stalock was right there. 37 shots now for Ottawa. And they're not done. Fired in by Weircotch around to this side. Kavanajad with Mahalik and Spezza. He'll wheel it to the far side for Weircott. Spezza. Carlson. And back to Jason Spezza. Weircott loads up. And he wanted Mahalik and it hit him in the skate. Nice little fake. And there's the, there's the really good power play puck movement by the Ottawa Senators. Low, high, back down, hit the seam. Back across, changing the angle of attack three different times. Carlson, he'll place it in the corner. Smith bats it back up the boards for Corvo. Nice keep in. But then he gives it right back to Stewart, who lunges out to clear it to center. That's a battle to get it out. Carlson quickly on the re-entry. He's got Conacher. Far side, but behind the back, and then deflected. And Stalock just made a save off a deflection from Hannon. <laughs> Hannon just looked back at him, gave a little bit of a wink. Hannon trying to block the pass. Forced Alex to make a huge save. 36 saves for Alex Stalock. Penalties over, and the Sharks oh. killed all of them. And scored on one. Big special teams game from that standpoint for San Jose so far. Conacher up top. Corvo settles it. Stalock the save. And Shepard there to clean it up to Braun. Stretch pass for Marlowe. No icing. Anderson up the boards for Corvo. That's played to the far side for Grant. 
Conacher waits for it to fall, but it's blocked by Irwin. Now in for Ryan. Bobby Ryan tied up by Demur. Now Ryan with it. To Turris. He'll switch. No, kept it. Thought he was going to give it to Phillips. And instead, he steers it out of the zone to Weircock. Down to 340 left in regulation. Kyle Turris is shot. Saved by Staloff. Caught off those backboards, but he was ready. Marlowe. McCarthy. And in. Anderson. But Wingles gets to it first. Keeping it deep. Last night we were waiting for Montreal to get their goaltender out. But in a situation here, down by three, Ottawa needs one at even strength or even two before they can entertain that, you would think. And this is where the Sharks took over last night. Three minutes left in the game, and he could, Montreal couldn't do anything. Carlson, Stewart, posting up in front of the net, blocks that. And he'll throw it up ice as it hits the boards on a deflection and goes out of play. Alex Stalock. 38 saves as the Sharks lead. Staylock front and center with 38 saves. He's had some support early in the game. A minute 16 in, Tomas Hurdle. Then Desjardin, his first of the year. Tommy Wingle shorthanded. James Shepard, his first of the year. And then not long ago, the All-USA goal. Wingles to Guam, to the big Pavelski. Five San Jose goals. Their biggest output on this road trip. This and is the most... That man with a great performance. Yeah, I was going to say, the most shots the Sharks have given up this year, 40. And staylock has been great. Carlson drifts one in wide. Scott Hannon with Joe Thornton. And now Hurdle. Good to see Tomas Hurdle get back on the score sheet. And he's had a good night, too. And he's played well. Here he is again. Reversing it for Thornton. Mark the thought for Ottawa. Carlson wanted Zibanejad. And down it goes. Here's Logan Couture. In the zone alone. He'll shoot. And Anderson the save. Uh, interesting talking about Tomas Hurdle. The coaching staff talking today about, you know, putting guys in and, and just the lineup in general. And as they were talking about Tomas Hurdle, he didn't get a lot of ice time yesterday. Todd McClellan did mention. One thing about Tomas, if he gets, he's one time, one guy out there that every time he touches the puck in the offensive zone, he's got a chance to score because of ability. Boy, did he call that or what? Right on the money. First goal of the game. Couture now down behind the goal line. Out to Demers. He'll shoot it wide. Matt Irwin. Kennedy for Marlowe. Nice area for Patrick. He loves to shoot from there. Nice but soft area, right? Anderson made the glove stop. Time ticking down here for Ottawa. Down by three, a minute 45 to go. And the Sharks looking to make it a two-game sweep. This is the last time these teams will battle in the regular season. And the Pacific Division giving the Senators some trouble. They were swept into two games by Anaheim as well. Freddie Hamilton working the far side with Braun. It's Hamilton again, off his skate, lays it off for Vlasic. His shot into traffic off a skate on the block. And the Sharks putting some work in now, trying to finish this game off. Desjardins takes it to the net. He'll get it back behind the goal. Stick check by Cowan. To the net, and Anderson sees that, has to cover another faceoff with a minute three to go. And stay tuned. For E. Sure at Sharks Post Game Live coming up next, Brody Brazil and Brett Hedekin back in our San Francisco studios. Jamie Baker standing by here in Ottawa, and we will visit with one of the Sharks as well. At least that's our plan. That's our plan. Sometimes the plans don't always work, but when they do, it's a beautiful thing. It is. It's 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 TV magic, really. That's what we try and create each and every night, Drew. Every single night. And we being a collective, we, right? of the course. team, the whole team. Phillips, as Bobby Ryan comes to center now for Ottawa. Angle to the board by Brad Stewart, who finishes his check. Pavelski there on the loose puck. And that'll skip down the ice. 
Icing called as Weirkotch couldn't get to it in time. So the Sharks will head back to the Bay Area tonight. A day off for the players tomorrow. Back at practice Tuesday morning. Then a quick flight down to Southern California. And we'll be on the air at 7 o'clock from the Pacific time zone, my friend. On Wednesday, Sharks against Daryl Sutter's Los Angeles Kings. That is one. That's the one you were looking for. Well, yeah, I know you're looking. We look forward to all the days, but that's the one you thought was one of the more compelling games on this, the end of the road trip. Well, we've had some already, but that is going to be one to look forward to. Is Staylock trying to find it, and he does. Well, that was a little Alex Staylock and Scott Hammond are having a little bit of a discussion. This puck comes off the faceoff, and I'm not sure if Scott Hammond's. Yeah, Scott's there. Yep. So this is, let me just find that. I'll get it. Let me take care of it. That was like, what's that uh, arcade game? Whack a gopher? Whack a mole. Whack a mole. That's what it is. There's Wingles. Skates it out with less than half a minute left. McCarthy. Hamilton. Tondra skates ahead for Ottawa. Bobby Ryan dropped past nicely to Turris. In front, cleared away by Demers, and the game is over. Fitting, that's just how the game should end. Alex Daylock making another good save. Alex Daylock, the first Shark goalie to win his first NHL start since October 25th of 2005. Nolan Schaefer, Schaefer did it at L.A. Five in a row, Nolan Schaefer. Yep.